Hi, I'm Ed Sproling. I'm the Editorial Director of Semiconductor Manufacturing and Design. I'm here with Paul Boudre from Soytech. Paul, we've been hearing a lot about SOI for probably about three or four process nodes, and where does it really fit in? Where do you see this starting to take off? Uh, clearly, the, the market uh, is, uh, is looking for solutions uh, today, and the solutions targeting power and targeting performance. So. Uh, we have seen Intel coming with uh, a major announcement on, on the change in the uh, uh, transistor architecture. So fully depleted is coming uh, into the industry. For fully depleted SOI, uh, we can really offer the technology at 28 nanometer, which means next year. Where will fully depleted SOI take off versus the partially depleted SOI? And what's the difference there? So clearly, uh, between fully depleted and partially depleted, there is a big difference. Uh, the difference first on partially depleted, we are addressing uh, this very high performance market. With fully depleted, we are going to address the mobility market, which is in a play, I mean, a much bigger market, and uh, it will be an open market. Don't forget that partially depleted uh, roadmap is uh, mainly driven by the um, <coughs> uh, consortia uh, around IBM. How does SOI address variability? So variability is, uh, is mainly driven by the, the complexity of the process uh, due to the uh, multiple implants that, uh, that you have in the, at the transistor level. Uh, on fully depleted, and this is uh, uh, clearly we remove all the causes uh, that variability is uh, driven by. So, so basically we have, a, uh, we have a really a step functions due to the, uh, due to the, the wafer itself. So how far does SO, fully depleted SOI carry us down in terms of nodes? Where do we get to with this where we don't necessarily need FinFETs? Because we've been hearing for a, long, for a couple months now that uh, TSMC and uh, Global Foundries are both looking at FinFETs at 14 nanometers. Can we get there with just fully depleted SOI? Can we possibly get beyond that? We clearly, I mean, uh, looked at that very early in the process. Uh, we couldn't, uh, you know, build a technology and a wafer, a material that could only uh, go for one node or two nodes. Okay, this is not what the industry is looking at. Today, we have a very strong data to prove that uh, this technology can shrink down to 14 nanometer. We are starting to investigate, I mean, how far down we can go, but 14 nanometer is already a, a, proof, a proof point. And this isn't such a simple cost equation, right? Because it's not just you save on the wafer and that's all you're saving on. There are other pieces in it. Uh, the overall cost of uh, ownership goes from, uh, you know, as you said, uh, there is the material piece, but there is the, the, the process piece. But there is also more than that. You have also the yield piece that goes into it. So we looked at all aspects of the cost. Uh, and, clear and clearly, I mean, uh, demonstrate today we have the now, here as well, the data to uh, uh, demonstrate that uh, in terms of uh, overall cost of ownership, fully depleted SOI is uh, clearly very competitive, uh, if not the best, uh, the best uh, solutions in terms of cost. And if this really does take off and we get economies of scale, does it drop even further? Does it change the equation even more? Obviously, volumes is driving uh, our cost uh, dramatically, but it's not only volumes. Uh, it's also the business model we, we are going to put around it, and we have some, some aggressive models that we want to deploy. Is there any downside to going to fully depleted SOI? Is it harder to work with? Is it harder to secure? Is there a limited supply? No, this is, uh, this is the same. I mean, we have ex multiple experience today in multiple fabs where you run uh, uh, SOI wafers and bulk wafers in the same, uh, same manufacturing line, so no change. Uh, you just uh, you just move from uh, SOI to bulk or bulk to SOI in the same environment. And no change in terms of partially depleted to fully depleted. No change either. I mean, this is uh, the change in partially depleted uh, is more on the design part, uh, and uh, we are clearly low lowering the barrier when it com comes to fully depleted because you can really remap a bulk technology in fully depleted SOI planner. Uh, it's much much uh, easier. You also don't have to do things like dope the channel the same way you do with a bulk CMOS, right? Exactly, and and uh, that's part of the you know the, the major change. We uh, we can really simplify the the process itself, process integration. So you save both in terms of time and cost there. Yes, you save in terms of times. You term, you you uh, improve in terms of yield. 
and uh, you basically uh, look at uh, if you look at the overall um, uh, capacity of your manufacturing you can also increase your overall capacity do you see the um FDSOI playing well with FinFETs as time goes on? Uh, we will have FinFET. The industry will have FinFET, this is clear. I mean, uh, you have uh, uh, clearly seen uh, some of the, I mean, one leader at least uh, uh, has already committed. But, but you will have uh, both technology. I think it's uh, very important that uh, fully depleted came uh, much earlier than uh, 14 nanometer. We need a uh, fully depleted transistor again as I said, to uh, support uh, the demand in terms of uh, power performance. So uh, we are offering uh, fully depleted at 28 as a low risk solutions. Uh, uh, but FinFET will come in the 14 nanometer range, clearly. And we have also I mean, material solutions to support, uh, to support FinFET on SOI. Paul Boudre, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ed. Thank you very much.